Okay, it's time to talk about our town of the week. Where are we heading this week? Well, this week we are heading 147 miles east of Abrasoch, last week's town of the week. We are heading 39 miles east of Swansea. Are you any nearer to where we are going? Where the town where we're going is on the banks of the Sirhawi River. It's in the county bower, borough of Bar- Blaenau Gwent. It is Tradiga. <laughs> Yeah, Tradiga has a population of 9,473. It's got a brass band. Have a listen. The average house price in Tradiga, 113,000. And if you want to stay there tonight, it's going to cost you around 70 quid. Uh, the t- town grew up around the ironworks and it is the birthplace of the NHS. And Irene Bevan was born in Tradiga, as well as Neil Kinnock and uh, Dracula himself. Ray Reardon, the snooker player. But that's enough from me. What did the people that actually live there think? I win. Uh, my name's Tommy Smith. We're sitting at the foot of the Tradiga Town clock in the circle. The clock is 72 feet high, composed of cast iron. The idea of the clock was first brought about by the Iron Master's wife. Mrs. Davis. Unfortunately, she didn't get to see the clock when it was finished, but Mr. R.P. Davis, he was the iron master and he lived at Bedwellty House. He, he oversaw the completion of the clock and the clock was built in 1858. Uh, the area we're sitting in now was once called the Market Square, but obviously it's now called the, the Circle, which is a, a meeting place for the townspeople, a place of celebration, I, I would say. On the 30th of November, we have our Christmas light switch on, and then the, the clock then becomes a, a focal point for celebration again, where we, we light the clock up with, with lights. Um, we don't have a, a tree in Tradiga. We, we light the clock up as a, as a celebration and to, uh, to celebrate the turn on of the lights where we illuminate the town. Hi, Wynne. Uh, my name is Gail Allen. I've got a little baby shop in Tradiga called Lots for Tots. Um, I've lived here all my life. It's a lovely little community, a lovely town, but it's gone very quiet. Um, I can remember years ago when I was young, I just left school, I started in Tredega Market, the indoor market, which was so busy and, it, well, you didn't know what to serve next. There were so many customers. Hi, Wyn. My name is Kevin Phillips and I'm project manager at Cymru Creations and director of Made in Tredega. we got some wonderful projects going on you uh, we are based in the little feeder in Tradiga where we got some wonderful live shows going on and and we're showing some wonderful films right the way throughout the year on our cinema screen but we got some great projects as well including our film academy which is sponsored by BBC Children in Need so it's free for all the youngsters to come to and at the moment within the film academy we are currently working on an official Stephen King film which is called The Stationary Bike, and that's going to be great. We got permission off Stephen King himself to actually make it. We're actually working on a project where we will develop audio trails so people can come to Tredega and download audio trails or pick up MP3 players at the local museum and walk around the town and learn about the heritage. So we've got loads of things going on in Tredega, so what a wonderful place. Hi, Wen. I'm Garas. We're in the local museum of Tredega and... um Oh, we got um, a Chartist rifle. Also, we got we donated and presented us a, a brooch that was found by a metal detector, 700 years old. We didn't know how much it was worth, but um, the gentleman had presented it to us because we were the nearest museum where it was found, on the Kevin Gola Mountain between Kevin and um, Pont Lotten. We got that in our case. This is a um, Tradiga Medical Aid Society sign which was in the number 10, the circle. And there's Rowley, that was chairman. And that's Nora Child, she was the secretary for years. We were the birthplace of the medical aid, and um, then Nye Bevan had the idea, and he took it to Parliament then, and the NHS came about then, didn't it? Yeah. Hi, my name is Deborah Hill. I'm working in the tea rooms at Bedwellty House and Park in Tredega. It's a beautiful environment, beautiful park, especially in the autumn time now when the leaves on the trees are turning in colour, beautiful golden colours and reds. A lovely little tea room. We have many visitors, especially from around the world, who are chasing up their ancestry trees. 
and yeah come along and come and see for yourself and enjoy our nice little welsh welcome Oh, it is a Welsh welcome indeed. So uh, there we go. And we will be going live for some chat to Tradiga. And I'm delighted to say I am now joined uh, by, well, we heard them a little bit in the first uh, part of the item on Tradiga. It was uh, Tradiga Town Band and their Vice President, Iwan Fox, is with me now. How are you, Iwan? How are you, Iwan? I'm good, mate. Uh, so are you a Tradiga boy? I am born in St James's Hospital in 1965 and... Remain a Tradiga boy at heart ever since. Fantastic. Uh, tell me a little bit about the band. Was it a colliery band or an ironworks band? What was it? Well, originally, it was an ironworks band, uh, Mr. Humphrey's band in 1849. And the first uh, mention of the band was when the a new blast furnace was being opened in the town. But the band itself was constituted in 1876 when we won the nationalised dead but up in Wrexham. And, but it took the band three days to come back home after celebrating. And when we returned, we became <laughs> the Tradiga Town Band as it is today. Uh, I'm interested uh, in, in uh, collier bands and ironwork bands because, obviously, to, to the level that those guys were playing at, right, even at that time, uh, you know, now it's a lot more professional. But I, when and where did people learn to read music? Or was there a different notation like solfa for choirs? No, so far it's nothing different. We, we read it off treble clef, etc. But a lot of the teaching came from the players themselves. They would have been possibly taught piano when they, they were younger. Uh, and then when the brass bands came into being in the late 1840s, 1850s, you know, some players would have picked up, taken on the skills and then just passed it on because they wanted to do amateur music making in, in their towns and linked to the collieries or linked to steelworks or the ironworks. I mean, I don't wish to be condescending in any way because it's it's a respectful thing, but it's 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 incredible that those things happened in such small communities. It is. It was a bit of a social phenomenon, really, because um, higher purchase, which was a brand new invention, uh, came in during the eighteen forties, eighteen fifties, and because you had iron uh, owners wanted to make sure that their workers were kept away from the devil of drink, etc. They invested through high purchase ah, right. by musical instruments. Right. Then the, the players then taught themselves. Then you, they, they were taken away from the pubs, and so they had better workers who were better educated. In, that is, it's a fascinating, uh, it's a fascinating topic. I'd love to see some program or you know hear a program on Radio Wales about it. So uh, t- tell me about Triga Band now. Are they still based in Triga? They are. We are still based. Right in the heart of the town, not far from the town centre. Um, we've been there since, as you say, 1876, and we'll be there for the next 100 years or more, if hopefully. Yeah. The band is very successful, one of the top five bands in the world. And in the next few weeks, this weekend, of course, we'll be doing our bit for the town with the Armistice Parade, yeah. which is very, very important for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, but from that, we go then to Linz, where we are playing at the Bruckner House where we are part of the Linz Festival. So the, the name of Tradiga is going to be taken all over Europe and we, we do it with a great deal of pride. Fantastic. Sum up Tradiga for me in three words. A fantastic place. That's a two. Oh, that was three, wasn't it? Fantastic. A fantastic place. Oh, a fantastic place. Wonderful. Hey, thanks very much. Uh, that is Johan Fox from Tradiga Town Band. I missed the word A. Uh, my apologies. There we go. Another criticism. I love it. Here on BBC Radio Wales, you'd have heard uh, my breaking news that uh, there has been yet another Tradiga success story today uh, as uh, one pub in the town has smashed it with an award for the best toilet in the business uh, and uh, we're able now to have live on the show, thanks to the uh, the team here that have worked so hard to track down Rachel Stanley, who manages <laughs> the Olympia in Tradiga. Hello. Hi. Tell me then, platinum rating. Well, I don't know. I don't know whether it's because they're probably the most selfie toilets in Weatherspoons. <laughs> Are they really? Yeah. You can guarantee on Facebook on the weekends you'll see a lot of selfies from our ladies' toilets in our right. lovely Come mirror. Describe, the, describe them to me. The selfies or the toilets? The, I don't want to see the selfies. <laughs> I, want to, I want you to describe, as I walk in through the door, what gives your toilets that wow factor? I think the ladies' toilets are very bright, so are the gents. Um, the gents are a nice sky blue colour. Nice. Very well maintained. Very well. Very, very well maintained, yes. And the ladies' toilets, the same 
nice, just nice colours, clean, presentable, and just well looked after. I mean, uh, what are we talking about in, in you know, white wear in there? You know, what kind of quality of porcelain have you gone for? Oh, it's the top end. It's top your end. standard. Weatherspoons spend a lot right. of time and a lot of money on their yeah. toilets. Yeah. And again, you know, I'm quite surprised as well because we are 17 years old now, this pub. Really? And we've never had refurbishment on our toilets, so that's how well looked after they are. Wow. I mean, you, you must have a great band of uh, people that help you there at the Olympia. Yeah, the staff and especially my cleaners. Yeah. Massive shout out to those. Well, let's, gi- let's give them a shout out. What are they called? Uh, Diane Smith, Diane, Doreen Meredith, Doreen. and Sylvia Burr. If it was Diane, those three Doreen girls. Is, I mean, if we're looking for a cleaner, it's got to be one of them, isn't it? Diane, Doreen, or Sylvia. Yes, they Splendid. are top notch. I'm not willing to yeah. share them. Yeah, uh, there's be. I mean, even on TripAdvisor, the toilets, the toilets are mentioned. Yes, they are. They're yeah, I mean, a key part of the pub, I think. You're one of the few that will have seen... I mean, obviously, for the right reasons, you're one of the few that will have seen both the gents' and the ladies' toilets there yes. in, in the Olympia. Which would you pick out as being the best? Oh, it was definitely the ladies. Definitely the ladies? Yes. Right. I mean, how possible would it be, say, to put a, a temporary bar into the ladies that all of us could enjoy the ladies' toilets? <laughs> I think it's a bit extreme, but bit something extreme. we could look at. <laughs> hey, I def- think something you should definitely... Maybe mince pies and mulled wine in there. <laughs> well, everyone can have a look because there's so many selfies out there. It's ridiculous. It's amazing. Okay. Hey, congratulations. How do you intend to celebrate? Um, I'm going to put a notice up on my bar straight away. Right. And just thank everybody... Was voted or well, well, why don't you make you know why don't you make that acceptance speech now okay right I, I'm going to do it for you okay I'm going to announce it right ladies and gentlemen welcome to the toilet of the year winning our highest pri- prize in our platinum rating uh, please could we have silence and please could we have a drum roll the winner of platinum rated toilet of the year goes to Rachel Stanley from the Olympia in Tredegar. Uh, Rachel, here is your award. What would you like to say? I would just like to say a massive thank you to all members of staff, especially Mm -hmm. the cleaners, for helping us gain this award. Don't get tearful now, Rachel, on me, will you? Pardon? Don't get too tearful on me, will you? I'll try not to. (laughs) Rachel, you've been a little joy. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Uh, Enjoy those toilets. (laughs) Thank you. There we go. That's the Olympia Tradiga. They have got platinum toilets. Uh, There we go. Our Town of the Week Tradiga.